Um, Blinken thinks that the U.S. can deal with such a regime, even as it carries out an extermination of one of the ethnic minority groups under its control. He told NPR's Mary Louise Kelly yesterday, and this was like uh, early in February, um, quote, this has been a challenge for American administrations going uh, back decades and decades, and we have to be able to find ways to do both. Kelly then asked if the U.S. should boycott the 2022 Beijing Olympics. Uh, Blinken emphasizes the need to prevent the importation of goods produced by Xinjiang forced, the forced labor system. Quote, uh, but we have to be able to do multiple things at the same time, he said, pointing to Russia to show that Washington can cut deals with the regime it simultaneously condemns. And apparently echoing Biden's recent pledge to, quote, work with Beijing when it's in uh, America's interest to do so. But then this author makes a very good point that Putin has relentlessly targeted his political opponents with arbitrary detention and assassination. But the Chinese campaign to wipe out the Uyghurs amounts to an international emergency of a different category in a far larger scope. Despite the clear evidence, uh, such as heroin victim testimonies, that these crimes are taking place, Beijing has recruited dozens of countries to endorse its actions as a benign counterterrorism campaign and executed a global disinformation campaign to dispute the allegations it faces. The Chinese leadership's grip on Xinjiang demonstrates a technological sophistication and a diplomatic savvy that is, uh, has so far shielded it from facing international pushback. So can't the United States do multiple things at the same time when it comes to Chinese, uh, the Chinese party's state's mass atrocities? Not if its priority is to turn Beijing into an international pariah rather than champion of uh, multilateral action on climate change and global public health. Um, so the Biden administration pledged to turbocharge the international response to the Uyghur crisis <clears throat> in a way that the previous one due to its constant kneeling of U.S. allies, couldn't. But Biden and Blinken can't claim to do that if their rhetoric about cooperation with the world's most influential perpetuator of genocide doesn't match the urgency with which they must act, and if Biden keeps flubbing questions with such clear answers. Yeah, maybe Biden should just stop talking and let his people do their work. Um, well, and I just wanted to highlight this part really quickly because someone's asking, like, where are the Muslim countries on this subject. Yes. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different story. Um, a, yeah, so uh, basically China has gotten them to endorse their actions. Right. Um, okay, so I also, here's the thing. Here's my, what I would do if I wanted to pr show that there's going to be consequences for China's um, human rights violations, okay? If I was in power, this is what I would do. And I'm doing this with very little information, with, without doing a lot of research, uh, and without having a team of experts that could advise me at the moment's notice and with, with the best reports and, and the best intelligence agencies, okay? So take it with a grain of salt, okay? Just, just coming out, like just whipping it out, right? Because So it might not be very good, right? But I would be saying that one way we could pressure China, one of the many ways, is to move aggressively with making trade agreements with China's competitors in the region and beyond, right? I would like very, very, very um, ease all barriers, all, ta every, all taxes, everything. I would try to come up with a version of NAFTA with Vietnam's, uh, Philippines, um, and all the you know what basically what Obama was trying to do. Well, and what about Trump. India? India, yes. In okay, that was great. Yes, India, especially India. Yeah, but we our, got what, okay, our so, boy Modi over there. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, like we could like you could you could if you have trade better, bigger trade agreements with with Modi, they, you could pressure them more for their human rights violations as well, okay? Also, as much as we complain about India's human rights violations, it's nothing compared to oh. China's human rights violations. But, but, but like Vietnam, such a success story, right? So, you know, the, the thing is with US corporations, the government can't like tell them to stop dealing with China 
and working with like I don't know countries like Vietnam. Okay, the problem, but by, by the way, the problem with yeah, but but they could incentivize them because it's a free country and all. Like it's not like China. Like hey, stop working with China. Uh, China. Like you have Disney and you have like Nike and all of these. They're gonna keep working with China, right? But if you instead of like maybe doing a trade war with China, okay, in just make it easier for all these corporations to i mean they have to be to be fair like vietnam is stealing right now a lot of um business from china okay so that's good but come out and say as a government that we're going we see this shift we see this shift to countries like vietnam and we like it we like it and as a government we're going to but given what china has done instead of doing a trade war with china we want to subs like we want to make it easier for U.S. corporations to work with countries like Vietnam, right? Um, and make trade like agreements with countries like we like. Look, Vietnam has a better human rights record, uh, and we like the shift that is happening. And as a government, uh, we want to encourage that. I don't know, maybe something like that. I don't know. I'm just I'm coming up. I don't know if that's a good idea because I don't have I didn't do research on this. I'm just making stuff up right now maybe it's a good idea maybe it's not a good idea. um <laughs> fixed it <laughs> yeah fix it okay. any, um, any other world problems you want me to fix yeah what what, what next mm. india um so <laughs> no. um oh and to um answer your question that you said earlier so when was this written um so as of today eight days ago canada became the second country to recognize the week eight days ago Okay, this is thanks to the Trump and then only, administration. Only, right? only three days later, the Netherlands became the third. Okay, so <laughs> this is probably thanks one of the few things we could Trump ask uh, thank the Trump administration. Well, you for. know, that's not what this analysis is saying. Quote, perhaps the political support for those votes would have been there without the Trump administration's oh. 11th hour designation of Beijing's anti uyghur campaign as a gen genocide in January. But it's increasingly clear that that decision reportedly made by the then Secretary of State, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo over the objections of um, the career officials on his legal team and later endorsed by his uh, successor, Antony Blinken, has made all the difference in spurning more international action. So it probably had an effect. We're not, we don't know for sure, but it, it seems like it had. Yeah, so... Well, this whole thing with Mike Pompeo is very interesting. I mean, this is a whole different. By the way, subject. fuck Mike, Mike Pompeo. Like, just let's well, be clear. Can I because... finish, please? No, no, there, I just have no, to say. Fuck Army, Mike come Pompeo. on. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Um, there are people who are saying a lot of his, like this came, like they said, 11th hour designation on the last day. Then there was the designation of the Houthis as a terrorist organization. It was. I was reading something, and it was really interesting. This analyst was talking about how, um people are speculating that this is him trying to set up his record for a presidential run. Yes. We, we said that already before on another live stream. No, you didn't say presidential. You're just saying, I said his political, uh, for his political ambitions in the yes, future. But, right. um, I thought that the, I, I hadn't heard about, a presidential campaign so that was i cool. i heard about him i didn't believe it i i didn't know if it was true. that's why i specifically said i know he had political ambitions for doing all that crap um some people said he might run, went around for president i thought that was like what so i wasn't sure so that's why when i when we covered this before i said political ambitions instead um yeah but so can i now fuck pompeo okay because he did like he went out and and he and just a f right before he left out he just did a whole bunch of things okay mm -hmm. like he did like like just wrecking ball on his way out okay? drastic actions yeah and he did so many things and just one of I them mean, maybe happened to be good okay <laughs> but almost we like every, that one. yeah we like that one but like everything else he did especially especially like motherfucking selfish son of a bitch like made like did every made the world a horrible place for so many other people just because of his political ambitions and he didn't give a shit about any of that right like that virtue signaling by designating the houthis as a terrorist group making it 
every fucking expert telling you that that is going to make it impossible for all these human rights organizations to get aid and food to children that are dying and the medicine that is needed to get there and he knew that that's is going to be it's going to it's, it seemed like it's going to be tough for biden to undo that because the houthis are garbage it's a, it's a garbage group of people that are extremely anti-Semitic. So removing the terrorist designation from them uh, would have looked really bad. But Biden came in and was like, you know what? We're going to remove this. People are telling us that this is bad for the people, for civilians on the ground. So kudos to the Biden administration for undoing that when uh, what uh, that fucking garbage decision by Pompeo right from the beginning. So kudos to Biden for doing uh, undoing that. Um, yeah, but, but yeah, maybe like out of like, he took, basically he took a giant shit, um, over a lot of things on his way out, but maybe one of the end up being one of the things he did maybe ended up accidentally being good. Um, I don't think Pompeo, given what he did with everything else, I don't think he's a person that gives a shit about human rights violations. So if this ended up making countries like Canada push countries like Canada and Netherlands, you said, yes, was, um, push them to also recognize this as genocide, and maybe that's going to make it more difficult for Canada, especially Canada, which is really cozy with China. Uh, it's well, going to make it. This article actually has a lot of really in interesting analysis on Canada being soft on China, but I, we can't even get into that today. <laughs> Because yeah. the the lots of the um, it was the opposition parties that pushed for the designation of genocide from Canada, and they were mm -hmm. highlighting Trudeau's failure and the Liberal government's failure to call out the quote unquote horrible conduct. Anyways, okay, we already went over Trudeau now. and most of his government declined to show up for that vote. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. This is cool. a yeah. Uh, the, this is one thing. <laughs> this is one thing the conservatives, um, people say like, oh, this is just a conservative's way of trying to make the uh, liberals look back bad in Canada. Uh, well, maybe okay. they do look bad. Maybe they do. Maybe maybe, 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 maybe they do maybe look bad. It's justified. Oh my god. Anyways, let's go. Uh, <laughs> any comments you need to add before we? <laughs> No. And you call yourself liberals. Liberal. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right. I picked on your name. <laughs> all right, yeah. Uh, fuck Pompeo one more time, and fuck the CCP, um, and yeah, and fuck Biden only today for specifically for doing cultural r relativism. Um, yeah, fuck Biden today as well. Today, fuck Biden as well. Fuck Trump. Fuck Biden today specifically. Fuck Pompeo. And most of all, fuck well, the CCP. And also Trudeau and, and Trudeau. the liberal, yeah. liberal government. Yes. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. If you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Kali, you know, like me, then that means that you probably want more blasphemous art. Well, I have good news for you. If you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description below, then you get a free booklet of some of the tastiest blasphemous art available today. So if you want some of this delicious blasphemy, and we're so generous that we update it for you guys weekly for free, all you have to do is sign up for our newsletter below. Uh, you can also go to blasphemousart.com slash ebook. That's blasphemousart.com slash ebook. Sign up with your email and you get free gifts of this tasty blasphemy. What could be better? So make sure you sign up. Link below.